Hello everyone, welcome back. Today let's see uh, lesson 7 from unit 1. In this lesson we are going to cover signal approximation using orthogonal functions. So how the signal can be approximated using the orthogonal functions is, is one of the method for expressing using the orthogonal signal space. So after completing this lesson students must be able to express the orthogonal signal space and approximate function by a set of mutually orthogonal functions. You need to express the function. So what do you mean by this orthogonal signal space? As you all know the space is nothing but a complete set of elements. So similarly an orthogonal signal space is nothing but transition of an orthogonal signals. So as in the concept of vectors, a sum of components along a set of n mutually orthogonal vectors provided these vectors form a complete set of coordinate system. Similarly, a signals concept also. In the case of signals, any signal x of t can be expressed as sum of its components along a set of n mutually orthogonal functions if these functions form a complete set. So in the space, here we are going to discuss or we are represented as an orthogonal signal space. So in a space, how these signals can be represented with an orthogonal condition that we are going to see. Using the approximation of a function by set of mutually orthogonal functions. So for a given n set of orthogonal functions, how the function can be approximated. So here we are considering some n set of n functions represented with g1, g2 and so on which are orthogonal to one another over an interval t1 to t2. So the representation of g1 to gn set of elements with considering some j and k signals. So if these two are perpendicularly perpendicular, mutually perpendicular to each other the product is related to zero and for when they are not equal so it is some constant kj so from the two expressions as you already discussed in the previous lesson last slides a b are the two vectors similarly here also here a b in place of those two signals here interesting j and k g suffix j g suffix k are the two signals next considering consider an arbitrary signal x of t over an interval t1 to tt sorry over an interval t1 to t2 by linear combination of these n mutually orthogonal signals so we need to represent an x of t with these n sig signals which are considered in a space g1 g2 so on up to gn so we are considering x of t with respect to those signals with some magnitude c1 c2 and so on the above expression can be written in, in terms of summation which is expressed here x of t equals to summation r equals 1 to n cr into gr of t and we have discussed the c1 c2 so on are the magnitudes which must be which need to be reduced for obtaining the approximation of the function so as per the error condition we know that x of t is equals to x of t minus c1 to x of t and the uh, mean square error epsilon is also given which we know that one so for these n set of signals we need to consider summation term as you already discussed that c12 expression so uh, let me open this uh, annotation Here you can see the magnitude C12 which we have considered in the previous slide. So C12 express is rewritten 
so x1 of t you have considered only x of t and x2 of t is the number of set of signals as you know that g1 to gn those signals are considered as an x2 of t in place of x2 of t so we to write those 1 to n set of elements we are expressing summation which we already discussed in the earlier slide This is what we have already have x of t expression. So in place of x to of t, we are writing that expression r equals to 1 to n, c r into g r of t. And epsilon representation, rewriting x e expression inside the x e square. And next, to minimize this epsilon, in the vectors condition, we are related the do, uh, differentiation condition equated to zero. Uh, and the differentiation term with which we are done is with respect to C12. So similarly here also, as we are having individual set of signals, so we need to have individual uh, differentiation. So for that reason, we are using a partial differentiation of individual magnitudes, C1, C2 and so on. And those all terms must be equal to or equated to zero. So we are considering a mutual expression or a common expression as do e by do cj. Okay. So do e by or do epsilon by do cj is equals to zero. So as t2 minus t1 is a constant, the value of epsilon, as we see from the previous slide, can be substituted in a above expression. So epsilon from previous expression. This epsilon equation is considered or substituted in this expression. After substituting, we need to do differentiation, partial differentiation. Okay. So we need to equal to zero. And after expanding the expression, it will be looking like this. As it is a form of a minus b whole square. So a square minus 2ab plus b square will be the our resulted terms. So on expanding, the terms resulted due to cross product of the orthogonal functions are 0 by virtue of orthogonality. So this condition you need to remember because the cross product of orthogonal functions is 0 as we already discussed that a dot b or uh, with respect to vectors and similarly to with respect to signals x of t into x a of t into x b of t like that. And here in this uh, lesson we are discussing or we are considered with the g j of t and g k of t so those terms will be zero so similarly the derivative with respect to cj of all the terms that do not contain cj are also zero as in the mean square error concept in the vectors we are considered that one so similarly here also we need to consider the cj term whichever the term that doesn't have any c or cj term will be zero so this x square of t will become zero as it has no c data and the remaining terms will be existing normally so for them we need to express with respect to integration please remember that we are considering common signal with respect to magnitudes as we have seen from this slide do epsilon by do cj this is the term that we are going to consider and equating to zero so for this reason the summation term is been removed and the c suffix t is been expressed means for a particular term we are considering so for c j term we are writing the expression so that's why epsilon term is not written here only integration term is expressed so integration t1 to t2 the remaining two terms as it is and equate this term to zero so changing the order of differentiation we get left hand and right hand side equations are being rewritten two integ uh, integral of t1 to t2 x of t into gj of t into dt will be the left hand side and the right hand side is uh, after differentiation with the cj square we got two cj that will be remaining and the remaining inside integration two cj integral of t1 to t2 gj square of t dt and on solving we get c suffix j will be equals to integral of t1 to t2 x of t into gj of t and 
the denominator expression will be integral of t1 to t2 g j square of t into dt so as you already discussed that integral of t1 to t2 g j square of t dt as kj from the first slide i think you remember that one here you can see so as the condition of orthogonal we are considering for when j is equals to k the term integral t1 to t2 g j square of t dt equals to kj so we are substituting the same term here also so we are substituting g j square of t dt as kj and the remaining term as this next from the above slides or from the above expressions we can summarize following points for a given set of n functions which are mutually orthogonal over interval t1 to t2 and over this interval considering an arbitrary function x of t of these n functions can be represented with x of t equals to summation r equals to 1 to n cr into gr of t and for this the magnitude the c the c suffix j value can be written as 1 by kj integral t1 to t2 x of t into gj of t dt that's from the lesson 7 we have let us meet for the next lesson 7 8 in our next presentation thank you